Hello and welcome to Alteryx Data Types 101. In this video, we're going to be talking about data types and what they mean for you and your workflows. My name is Michael Cusick. I'm an e-learning developer here at Alteryx. And I'm going to go into kind of a high-level explanation of what data types are and how you need to think of them when you're working in Designer. When you're reading data into Designer, you may see some unexpected behavior due to data type interactions. A function that you're expecting to doesn't work, or you can't do a certain calculation or aggregate data. So maybe some words aren't displaying correctly. These are usually problems with data types not being set correctly upstream. So the goal today is to understand what data types are, how to view data types, and how to recognize some data type interactions. We're going to be using just a couple tools today. We'll use an input data tool to read in some sample data. We're going to talk about the auto field tool, which can help you do some heavy lifting around data type classification. And then we'll also talk about the select tool, which allows a user to manually set data types. Finally, there's a field info tool, which is a handy tool that lets you export metadata about data as data. Designer works in five broad categories of data. So these are string, numbers, date and time, Boolean, and spatial objects. But you can also see over here in this configuration window that there are many types and subcategories of those data. So we'll talk about each one of those in sequence here. Let's first start off with string. String data is basically just any kind of alphanumeric data. Think words, names, addresses. It can contain letters or numbers, and you can do all sorts of functions on that kind of data, but you can't do any kind of mathematical calculations on string data. As you can see, there's several subcategories of string data. Let's just go through some of these. The first one, just regular string data, is fixed length data. Fixed length refers to how many characters are in your data. So a word with five letters would have five characters and would have a memory size of five. A word that has 20 characters in it would have a memory size of 20. When you set your column to be just regular string, the entire column will have a set number of string characters that it contains. So this can be handy if you know that your data is all the same amount of characters. An example of that might be a zip code or a year where you only have four characters. It's a bit limiting though, because if you have a data field with a variable amount of characters in it. And for example, if you've set the string length to be six and you have a record that has 20 characters, that 20 character record is gonna be truncated down to six characters. Likewise, if you have a record that's shorter than that six characters, then you'll have wasted memory because designer will allocate six characters of memory for every single record, no matter what's actually in those cells. The difference between string and W string, you can think of W as world. W string allows you to incorporate any Unicode symbol, which is really handy for any kind of non-English language string value. Next, we'll talk about V strings. V strings are definitely the most common and most versatile string type. This is the kind of data type that you're going to want to use for most of the time. V string allows you to have a variable amount of data in each cell, and it also doesn't penalize you for having less data in a cell or more data in a cell. Designer will allocate the exact amount of memory needed for every record. So vstring is the data type that you should most often be using on your day-to-day -day workflows. All right, let's talk about numbers. What is a number? You can see over on the side that there's many categories here. First, we'll talk about integers. A byte is the smallest integer, integer type, and I'm actually gonna bring up some help documentation that explains in depth the limitations of each of these types. In the Alteryx documentation for data types, you can see all the different kinds of of datas in all the categories. So here for numeric data, you can see under byte that you can use any positive number from zero to 255. So this is a good, efficient, small data type if you know that your values are gonna live within this range. As you move up, integer 16, integer 32, and 64, these just increase the amount of values that are available. So, you know, you have negative and positive 32,000, plus or minus 2 million, and then you get up into the trillions for N64. So it all just depends on your specific data and what kind of data you're expecting to come in. The next set of data types are for decimals, and I'm going to skip over fixed decimal for the moment, and we're going to go to float and double. Float and double are the data types that you're going to use if you're expecting to have any kind of decimal places in your data. And the only difference between them is just the precision level that they go to. Double is the most precise kind of data, but it also takes out the most memory. 
Double is also the most commonly used and the one we would recommend for day-to-day -day calculations. Fixed decimal, however, is kind of a special one. Um, it lets you specify exactly the decimal places that you want in your data. This is most commonly used for currency calculations, where you just need two decimal places and you want designer to round to make those rounding decisions for you. All right, the next type we're going to talk about is date. Date data is really interesting and it can be kind of complicated in designer. It's not quite as straightforward as you might think to do date calculations. For example, if you're trying to ask a question, what day of the week was it 15,000 days ago? It's not entirely obvious how you would get that answer. But date data type allows you to do that with certain functions. Designer splits date data type into three types. The first one is just simple date. So you're talking about year, month, and day. Designer reads it in exactly this format, which is typically not the format that data is going to be read in as. Usually people write dates with a slash or have the month and day first. We're not going to talk about it in this video, but there are tools in Designer that will help you convert string data type like that into proper date time data that Designer can then, can then do calculations on. Date time is the same as date, but it adds the hours, minutes, and seconds. So if you want really, really precise date calculations that take into account the time of the day, this is the date data type for you. And finally, you just have time by itself. 24 hour clock, hours, minutes, seconds. Boolean data is a type that you may not be familiar with. It's a very simple and small data type. It's the smallest kind of data in designer. And it only allows you to have two values, zero or one, which is usually um, corresponding to tr false and true. This is really useful for flagging data, and it's really often used in conditional statements. So you might say, if variable meets this criteria, then true, else false. In spatial objects, we're not going to talk too much about them. Just know that they are a geographic data type that is proprietary and specific to designer. So this is points, lines, and polygons that are usually derived from longitude and latitude data. With these kind of data objects, you can create maps, um, heat zones, calculate routes, things like that. So now we're going to talk about how designer treats your data when it's imported. If data is coming from a database, databases usually have data types already assigned. So Alteryx will attempt to read that metadata in and assign the appropriate data type accordingly. Certain files also have metadata that contains data type in it. So Excel and DBase, if data types have already been specified in those files, designer will read them in appropriately. And then there's certain kinds of files like CSVs, JSONs, and XML that just always come in as string data type. They don't have any metadata associated with them. So they'll come in as string, and then you'll have to do some parsing afterwards to kind of get the data looking how you want. So why do we need to even be worried about any of this? Why are data types important to designer? Well, the main reason is that calculations are field type dependent. Math calculations like summing, averaging, they're only available for fields that are marked as numeric. If you're working with a column that you expect to be numbers, and then you try to do some math-based calculation, you'll probably find that those options are grayed out or just unavailable for the tools you're using. String calculations like trim or concatenating values are only available for fields that are marked as strings. Date functions like date add or date time diff are only available for fields that are marked as dates. And the last really important consideration is that when you're joining data together from two different data types, the fields must match each other. So if you're selecting a column to match with another column in a separate data set, and one of them is numeric and one string, it's going to give you an error and it's not going to be able to join. Numeric fields must be matched with numeric, and string fields must be matched to other string fields. One other note is that when you are matching numeric data types and they're coming in as double, we highly recommend that you don't do this. Because of the high, high level of precision in the double data type, any kind of rounding error as a result of that precision is going to cause the join to fail. So we recommend using really any other kind of numeric data type besides double when you're going to do a join on, new, on number fields. So when you bring in data into the designer, if you recognize this results window over here, this is just a screenshot, and I'll show you kind of how this looks in practice later. If you click over onto this metadata tab, you'll see all the information about each field. So these represent all of your columns, all your fields. And this gives you your data types and its size and where it lives. So clicking on this metadata button will show you this information. If you click on the output icon, you can see what's happened to your data after it's run through an auto field tool, for example. You can see over here that they all came in as V strings. 
And then after the workflow was run, now they've been converted into vstring, double, in 16, boolean string. And again, I'll show you that, how that looks in practice in a minute. So now let's talk about the auto field tool. The auto field is a really simple and helpful tool. It automatically attempts to set types and sizes for your incoming data. It evaluates the content and it sets values for size and type based on what it thinks is in those fields. It only supports incoming string fields. So if you've already changed a data type upstream or if your data is coming in already marked as numeric, the auto field isn't going to be able to help you. This tool is mostly recommended for newcomers to Designer or if you just want to get an overview of your data as an evaluative exercise. The auto field tool has a hard time telling the difference between numbers and dates, for example, and it may turn fields that have numbers in them to numeric fields, even though they're still meant to be string fields. The next tool we'll talk about is the select tool. The select tool is great. It's one of the most versatile and useful tools in Designer. It allows you to deselect and reselect fields that you want to continue with downstream. It allows you to manually select a data type for each field, and it also allows you to size, to resize and rename fields. The data type is forced on the column. So if you have an alphanumeric field, let's say ABC123, and you set it to be numeric in the data type, Designer will run the workflow, but any of those values that have letters in them will be turned into nulls. The non-conforming values are nulled. The size of a data type has to do with how many characters are in it. So for numeric, this is measured in bytes. You can see over here that total pay has a size of eight because that's been coded as a double. And then string data types has to do with length. So how many characters are actually in your column. So now I'm going to jump over into Designer and show you how this works in practice. So I'm going to drag an input data onto the canvas. Then I'll drag a browse tool so we can take a look at what this looks like right now. This is all of our data coming in. And if you click on the metadata, you'll see that these are all of our columns and these are the data types. The browse tool will also show you a data profile for the kind of data that's in your file. Now I'm going to drop an auto field tool. We're just going to let this run on default settings. Now on the auto field, you'll see the output has changed. Some of the strings has left a V string. Some are now double, string, double, in 16, Boolean, and string. This is what it looked like coming in. This is the input icon, and then the output icon as it looked like going out. So you can see the auto field tool has attempted to reduce the size of everything. Before, everything was at 254. And then after, it's sized these down according to what's in those fields. The size of your data isn't something you really need to worry about if you have just a few records or a small sample size. But when you're working with data sets that have millions or billions of records, size really can make a difference for your file size and the speed and the efficiency of your workflow. So you can see some of the decisions that the auto field tool has made. Employee name, we assume that there's going to be a varying level of characters, so it assigned the type of vstring. Base pay, overtime pay, other pay, these are all numeric, so double is probably the best option here. Although you may want to change this to fixed decimal if you're only interested in two decimal places. The year is an interesting one. So for a year, designer sees that there is numbers in this column here. 2011. So it's assuming that that's a numeric data type. But you're not really doing math-based calculations on years. So oftentimes things like years and zip codes, kinds of data that have numbers in them but aren't used for mathematical calculations, are actually still meant to be string. In this case, if you wanted to do some datetime functions, you might change this year field to a datetime field. Now let's see what's going on in this notes field. It's giving it a categorization of bool. And we can see over in the notes that all of the values are null. So if we look at this browse tool, so a null represents no data. Therefore, the auto field is giving it a Boolean categorization because it's the smallest type of data. Now let's try this again with a select tool. Now you can see over in the select tool that we can go in and manually change all of the field types. Employee name and job title, we'd probably want to leave as strings. Base pay, like I said, we could do double or fixed decimal. You can also select and deselect fields that you don't need going forward. 
The last tool I want to show you is the field info tool. This is a simple tool, it has no configuration, and it outputs the metadata from your input data as actual data. This is useful if you want to export this kind of metadata into like a table or something. So it converts metadata into actual data. And you can see the metadata for this tool has already been auto-assigned by designer. So I hope that answers some of your questions about data types and gives you an overview of what they are and how to use them and how to think about them. If you need some more support resources, Alteryx Community is the best way to go. You can post questions, search for discussion forums. There's tons of articles, tons of user-generated content. If you've got a question, it's almost certain that someone else has already asked it and answered it. The Alteryx Academy contains interactive lessons and weekly challenges to really help your skills out. And of course, if you're having a really big problem, you can always email our technical support team at support at Thanks again for tuning in. My name is Mike Husick, and I'll see you next time.